So we found fixed end moments, we found dis stiffness and distribution factors, and now we need to go to step three, which is to perform the moment distribution process. So let's scroll down and we'll do that again. So for me, what I like to do is I like to make that table where we identify each of the joints. So in this case, we have joint A, we have joint B, and we have joint C. I like to identify the members as well. So this is gonna be the same for any moment distribution process. So I like to identify those as member AB, uh, member BA, right? So both sides of that joint, or both sides of that member, uh, member BC and member CB. Okay, similarly, I like to put in my distribution factors, and we'll remember at AB, this is rigid, so that goes to zero. At BA, we had uh, two-fifths, so I'm just gonna write in 0 0.4 instead of the two-fifths fraction. And at BC, we had three-fifths, and that goes to 0 0.6. And CB was rigid as well, so that's a zero. And, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna write in our fixed end moments. So we know at AB and BA, we had 12 kip feet. Okay, but this is where our sign convention comes into play. And we know for the moment distribution process, what we said is anything that is clockwise is going to be positive. So if you remember, when we had our uniform load, and you know it looked something like this, we had one fixed end moment on the left that looked like this, one fixed end moment on the right that looked like this. And what that means is the one on the left, in other words, AB, right, is going to be going counterclockwise. So if it's counterclockwise, this is where we take this and write it in as negative. And if it's clockwise, right, so on the right side at BA, it's clockwise, so we're gonna write that in, it's positive. Similarly, right, when we had the condition where we had a point load, we're still gonna end up with moments on the left is going to be counterclockwise, on the right is going to be clockwise. So when we write our fixed end moments in, we want to be careful to follow this sign convention. This sign convention is super important for this table. So anything on the left side of the beam is going to be negative. Anything on the right side of the beam is going to be positive. So that's our fixed end moment. And essentially this becomes our sign convention for the moment distribution process. And it's pretty important to remember that anytime we see a moment in this moment distribution process, if it's negative, it means it's counterclockwise. If it's positive, it means it's clockwise. So to complete our table, I'm just gonna draw some lines in, and then we're ready to distribute. And what we need to look at, I, I like to look at you know, joint B. So I, I think this is kind of a good way to start. So let's just take a free body diagram real quick of, of joint B. So if this is you know, point B and we label that B, what we know is that internally, there's gonna be some moment BA. And then on the other side, there's gonna be some moment uh, BC. And what we've been told so far is that these moments are assuming that a joint B is fixed, has no rotation. Okay, so we have a perfectly all locked down, it's perfectly rigid. And when we do that, we've solved this and we said, well, the moment at BA is 12 kip feet, and the moment at BC is 4 kip feet. Well, hopefully you're starting to see a problem here because when we sum the moments at point B, uh-oh, it doesn't equal zero anymore, right? Because basically what do we get? We get, well, we get, you know, 12 kip feet, you know, minus four kip feet equals zero. And you'll notice that that doesn't actually exist. Well, why not, right? I thought this was statics. I thought everything had to equal zero. Well, the reason is, is because this thing doesn't stay horizontal. It actually changes a little bit. And in order to do that, what we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna need to essentially add some moment you know, here and take some moment away from B, B, A. So when we rewrite our sum of moments equation, we're also gonna have some balance term in here. And I like to write, write it like this, kinda think about it like this. Well, we have M, B, A, you know, minus M, B, C. And in this case, we're gonna say, well, minus the balancing moment, right? This is some sort of balancing moment that needs to be added to get this thing to equal zero. Well, what is that balancing moment? And if you, we look at it like this, we say, well, obviously, well, 12 minus four doesn't equal zero because we need another eight in there, right? If we had 12 minus four minus eight, well, then we'd know what to do, right? So what that means is, in order to balance this joint, we're gonna need to take away another eight kip feet, 
right? So 12 minus four minus eight kip feet will now equal zero and then the joint will be balanced. So in other words, you know, between this side and this side, we need eight more kip feet. And to, to figure out, well, how big is each side? Well, that's where we use our distribution factors. And what we're really saying here is, right, we need this, you know, we need, you know, negative eight kip feet to balance the joint, right? So once we unlock it, it's no longer rigid, we need this negative eight, eight kip feet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that back in to either side of the joint based on the distribution factor. Right, so how much each side of the joint gets is based on the distribution factor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our distribution factor of 0.4, we're gonna multiply it by this minus eight kip feet, and we're gonna get some value. Right, and what that value is, is gonna be well, 0.4 times minus eight is just minus 3.2 kip feet. Okay, that's our that's the, that's this moment here that needs to go back on you know BA to start to balance this. Well, 3.2 is not enough. It's not all of the minus eight. So what we need to do is on the other side, on the other side of joint BC, we're going to take 0.6 now and multiply it by minus eight kip feet, and we get the rest of it. Right. What we're going to get here is we're going to get our minus 4.8 kip feet that we need to balance the joint. So that's it. I mean, that's that's the starting point. That's our that's our distribution. That's our distribution one, right? We're not done though because when we add moment to one side of a joint, it's going to impact the other side of the beam. So what we do is now we're going to start to carry this over, and the way I'll label this is carryover one, C O one. And what that looks like is basically what we're going to do is we're going to take half of this moment that we just added it in, or added in, and we're going to bring it over to joint A. And what that looks like is well, half of minus 3.2 is going to be minus 1.6 kip feet. And then we do the same thing on the other side. So we take half of 4.8, we bring it over to joint C, and that's going to be minus 2.4 kip feet. Okay, so that's 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 done now. So now we've balanced our internal joint. Our, our sum of moments goes back to zero, so we're happy again. And the last thing that we really need to do here is just sum all our moments. So let's write that in. We'll write sum of moments, right? And I'll just copy this line down one more time. So once I have that line in, now all I need to do is sum each of these moment pieces, right? Our fixed end moment, our distribution, or our carryover in each column. So what this looks like is the minus 12 minus 1.6 is minus 13.6. And that gives us our moment at joint A on beam AB, right? So this is gonna be kip feet, all these moments are in kip feet. 12 minus 3.2 is gonna be plus 8.8 .8 kip feet. Minus four, minus 4.8 is gonna be minus 8.8 .8 kip feet. And the cool thing here is when you look at this now, right, this becomes our moment at BA. This becomes our moment at BC. And when we sum those, now our, our joint is gonna be at equilibrium. It's not, it's not just gonna keep spinning. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then we have four minus 2.4 is gonna be plus 1.6 kip feet. So that's the moment distribution process, and we're done, right? We get to a point where our joints are balanced, and we're good. That's the good news. The bad news is we still have a couple more steps to do. We still have to go through putting these moments on free body diagrams and solving for shears, and then constructing our shear moment diagrams. So I'm gonna pause this here, and we'll start up a new video in case that's not something you're looking for. But if you are, you know, feel free to continue, and we'll, we'll go there. If not, I hope this helped you and helped clear up some confusion. So uh, until next time, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.